Okay, so welcome everyone to this uh, PI seminar series organized by the Information Engineering and Computer Science PhD School. Uh, my name is Francesca Bavolo and I am the head of the Remote Sensing for Digital Earth Unit in Fondazione Bruno Kessler. And I have the pleasure to introduce and moderate uh, this seminar today. Our speaker today is Professor Marco Barjaktarovic. And uh, just few information about his uh, uh, scientific career. Marco uh, got his PhD degree in electrical engineering from the University of Belgrade in Serbia in 2012. And in the same university, he started his scientific uh, career as a teaching assistant first. And he, started, and he also served as director of center for laboratory work in physics for technical faculties and as vice dean in finance. His research interests include, among the others, sensor technology for measuring non electrical quantities, real time image processing, medical image processing, neural networks, and so on and so forth. Uh, he conducted research in these topics in more than 10 national and international projects. And currently, he has the position as associate professor at the School of Electrical Engineering in the University of Belgrade. And he is also a research fellow at the DZ department because of this uh, project that he's going to talk about uh, for us today, which is a Marie Skodoskova Curie uh, Individual Fellowship dealing with low-cost multispectral camera and precision farming application. So uh, now I leave the floor to Marco. The seminar is supposed to uh, be of about 40 minutes, more or less, and then the floor is open to everybody in the room for questions and videos. So Marco, the floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, hi, everybody first. And also thank you, Francesca, for this opportunity to share my experience of getting this Maria Kiri project here at the University of Trento. I would also like to thank everyone for joining the seminar. And I hope maybe that some of you will find in this presentation some valuable advice to how to write your own Maria Kiri application. At the beginning, a few words about Maria Skodowska. Uh, key reaction. I suppose that you have already watched seminar by Paolo and Elena, so I will be very brief about uh, this. Uh, Maria Kiri is the European Union flagship program for postdoc uh, training uh, with the aim to provide researchers new knowledge and skills and to foster cooperation among sectors, disciplines, and borders. This program particularly funds postdoc fellows to conduct research activities in the institution in some other country. Uh, in my case, this institution is uh, University of Trento, while my supervisor is Professor Lorenzo Bruzzone. Basically, fellowship is about uh, mobility and about training, and the best thing is that you have a freedom to set your own training and career goals. And put it very simply, Maria Kiri will help you to become a better researcher. Uh, for Horizon 2020, there were four types of program or so-called panels. That was a standard fellowship for the people in academia to go in some other country in the Europe, global, similar, but outside of the Europe. Career restart for someone who has, I think, a break in the career for the two years. And reintegration to, for someone who is out of academia and want to return in. Uh, so the most uh, applicants apply for the standard and for the criteria, it is best you to look at the official site for Maria Kiri. Uh, there is also some changes, uh, like it is not more called anymore individual fellowship, but postdoc fellowship in the Horizon Europe program. And I think the most uh, big change is that uh, there is a limit now. Researchers with no more than eight years of experience after getting PhD can apply. Uh, also, on the EURAX uh, website, you can find a lot of useful uh, documents how to, what is uh, uh, application procedure and some tutorials how to write your own uh, proposal. Also, here is a tweet for uh, two days ago. Uh, the Maria Kiri action for this year will be open in one uh, month. So the procedure consists of several steps. 
First, you decide in which field you want to have a research. Second, uh, you should find institution where you will conduct your research. Then third, uh, to uh, find person who will be your supervisor, uh, write the proposal, and finally to wait for the results. Uh, and you should select your supervisor based on his experience in the field you want to research. Also, you uh, should select someone who has great uh, experience in management pro uh, projects and also in monitoring uh, in, and mentoring young uh, researchers. So if your proposal gets a good score, which means that evaluators find uh, your future research excellent with the value for the society and that your plan of activities and goals are feasible, uh, you will receive a funds. Uh, the success rate is uh, between, uh, I think, uh, 11 and 80 percent, depend on the panel and also the research field. In uh, 2020, there was more than uh, 11,000 uh, applications, so your proposal must be very well written. And before uh, I start with how I write my proposal, and what I learned during this uh, procedure, a few words of my background, although Francesca already introduced me. So I am associate professor at the School of Electrical Engineering, University of Belgrade. Uh, from, uh, I became associate professor one year ago. I got a PhD uh, in 2012 in the field of image processing. Uh, also, beside this, I was director of center for laboratory work in physics from 2017 for two years. Here we have about uh, 2,000 uh, students each year uh, learning the basic uh, uh, work in the laboratory and conducting some experiments in physics. And from uh, uh, 2019 until I came here in Trento, I was uh, vice dean for finance at the School of Electrical Engineering. And for my uh, research, it is mostly in the uh, applied image processing. I have expertise in machine vision, like uh, realization of some web inspection system for coated board production, then designing acquisition setup and uh, developing algorithms and their optimization for real time uh, execution for several in, uh, industrial inspection system for automotive packaging, food production, brewery, and similar things particle imaging velocimetry for uh, visualization of uh, 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 flow field and some uh, night vision uh, systems. Also something in uh, uh, medical imaging like uh, image fusion for better, for easier localization of tumor and doing something with uh, convolutional neural neutral network for brain tumor localization in MRI. And uh, for the teaching, uh, I gave lectures in a lot of fields like physics, instrumentation and measurements, image processing, uh, machine vision system, medical informatics, medical imaging, and so on. This is a list of subjects. Maybe I forgot something of that. Uh, so first, uh, why I decide to uh, try with Maria Kiri uh, application and how I find the uh, cost institution. Uh, I first heard about Maria Sklodowska key reaction in 2018, and usually most of the researchers applied for Maria Kiri after getting PhD. Uh, but after doing a lot of things other than research, uh, as you saw, I decided I should improve my research activities. And Maria Kiri seemed like the, maybe the best possibility to that. At the same time, uh, there was a lot of talk about multispectral and hyperspectral imaging as a new tool in machine vision, not only in, in the food inspection, but also in the food production. So I read a lot about application of hyperspectral imaging and uh, got interested in remote sensing as a field addressing the most urgent challenging for the society now, like climate change, public health, water and food shortage, deforestation and other things. So I decide that I would like to shift my, my, my career toward the remote sending, sensing. And uh, the procedure uh, usually start when institution in Europe, like uh, UNITN, announce a call for expression of interest in uh, Maria Curie action. That's mean the researchers uh, should send some brief sketch of their future research with the suggestion of potential supervisor. After selecting candidates, the host institution called them for short uh, 
training about how to write the proposal and to have a meeting with a future supervisor. So I did the same. I looked among the open calls for some with possibility for conducting future research in remote sensing. And my choice was a remote sensing laboratory at University of Trento with the Professor Lorenzo Brazone as a supervisor. I must say that I had a luck with this uh, because at the time when I looked, it was one of the, on the first listed uh, open calls on the EU portal uh, with the possibility for doing research in remote sensing. Then I started reading and found out about activities of the remote sensing laboratory and read the, the short biography with a list of past and current projects of Professor Brazone. So my choice was very, very easy. At that time, he had already supervised more than 35 PhD students. Uh, it was three years ago and uh, managed a lot of projects. And he's one of the highest ranked researchers in Italy. So I filled out forms with a short uh, description. It was, I think, one uh, more than one pages. And, uh, I suggest that uh, future supervisor be Professor Brazone. So uh, two weeks after the call was closed, uh, I was notified from UNITN that I was selected as a potential candidate for Maria Kiri uh, project with uh, University of Trento as a host institution and that Prof Professor Brazone agreed to supervise my research. So they organized a training in the middle of July uh, uh, 2019. Also, I had a meeting with Professor Brazone and he gave me some uh, additional advice and refined the idea of my proposal. And I had the time to uh, submit the first draft of the proposal by the 8th of July. So, uh, so I managed somehow. Uh, I read a lot of uh, articles, uh, drink a lot of coffee and uh, uh, I sent it before the deadline, uh, and in the just two days, uh, Professor Brazone uh, sent me suggestions how to improve that proposal. Also, the Office of Support to Research sent me their evaluation of the proposal, and then all the August and the beginning of September, I was improving and polishing my proposal before the deadline, and I submitted it at, at that time. Uh, so before I describe what I consider the most important part of the proposal, I will be able to explain uh, what my research is about. So pre precision farming is a present uh, for uh, several years, and uh, they are based mostly on commercial systems, which are used multispectral cameras. Uh, they make some prediction use based on NDVI or some other vegetation indices. And, but due to initial costs, they're dedicated usually to the uh, bigger farms, while small farms didn't implement this technology. And yet in Europe, uh, two thirds of farming uh, land are small farms. So this project aimed to enable small farms to access precision farming by developing an affordable multispectral camera. And after that, this imaging device will be mounted on a drone together with thermal camera, and we will monitor uh, uh, some farm uh, during one agricultural season with obtaining data. We will try to make classification and how to uh, basically suggest some ag agricultural activities in the field, which will res result in some decision support system. And this will be pro provide infrastructure for wider adoption of precision farming among small farms, which will maximize quality and yield also that it will be reduced the uh, uh, pollution of water using too much uh, uh, pesticides. Uh, and the starting idea is that multispectral camera can be designed using standard one color camera with triple band filters. Uh, so about the structure of the proposal, first proposal should be interest uh, from the research point with the potential for publication, but also to have some value for the society. This is because European uh, Commission wants to give funds to the project which do something something good for the society. Uh, so the Maria Kiri application consists of two documents. They are called B1 and B2. Uh, B2 is your CV together with some tables, but it is very straightforward to build, fill it, so I won't describe it. Here I will concentrate on B1, which is document where you describe your pro proposal. So basically it is your proposal. You have only 10 pages. 
So you must be very concise. You, have, you may save some space using tables and footnotes, and a few images in, in form of infographic can be useful. Also, you should be very careful. It is very likely that one of your evaluators will have expertise in completely different field. So you cannot write like you are writing when you're publishing in some special uh, journal. Uh, you should think like you are writing a review articles for some wider audience, but with very general knowledge about science. Basically, uh, society should have benefit from your research. And when someone out of academia read your uh, proposal, she or he must understand what is about. Uh, the advice is when you finish your proposal, you should give uh, it to someone who is out of your, uh, not only uh, research field, but out of your discipline. And if that person understood what is about, it is okay. But if she or he read your proposal without taking a break, then you're on the right track. And uh, you should follow the template. It consists of a three part excellence, impact and implementation. Uh, it is well structured and uh, the evaluators expected that your proposal be that form. Uh, there are some uh, subheadings in each of these three parts and they are a little bit changed na na the names in the Horizon Europe template, but basically you will write about same things I do here. So in excellence, you're starting by introducing your topic. What is the idea of your research? Uh, what problem do you want to resolve? What are you going to accomplish? And why it is important for so the society? I put a part of uh, my proposal in which I had answered this question on these slides, so you can look at it after. For example, this research will provide an opportunity for early adoption of precision farming, reducing equipment cost by more than 10 times, adding the possibility to preserve many small farms in Europe. Maybe I was a little bit overestimated here, four to five times is much more realistic. Uh, we are still in the excellent part. Second thing, you should describe the state of the art. Uh, if it's possible, use a table because they are cl uh, clearer. It is easier to understand what, it, what you are trying to say and also save some space. Here I present both uh, available commercial and, and some solution I found in literature. Also, I have an, another part about uh, how can hyperspectral image be reconstructed with multispectral one, uh, what, what is accomplished by now in using multispectral imaging and thermal for uh, some agriculture activities, and uh, how can be uh, that classification you use in uh, monitoring some fields. Uh, then you must explain how you will organize your research, set objective, present research methodology and approach. Uh, here you describe the work packages. I, as you see, I have a four. Each one has uh, his objective. First, uh, to design the multispectral camera, then to collect uh, some uh, data in the field for second, uh, in the third work package data analysis, and finally, design some uh, smartphone application. Uh, you should divide your uh, working package in several tasks. Uh, two to four is uh, more than enough. And here also is some uh, uh, description of one of the tasks for the three packages. Uh, then in uh, excellence, you have subheading quality and appropriateness of the training and two-way transfer of knowledge between the researcher and the host. So you start here by uh, telling that you will be uh, established uh, with your supervisor, career development plan, uh, plan at the beginning of your research. Uh, this plan is an important topic because uh, career development plan or CDP, it helps to map and track how you're improving your career. Uh, then you should write about uh, what you will learn at the host institution, but to not only things connected with your research, not only technical stuff, but also about uh, writing a new, how, a new proposal, uh, management, the fund, the patenting, uh, GDPR, and other things connecting more with the management. Uh, and there is a transfer of knowledge to the host institution from the researcher. Here, I just wrote that my experience in machine vision can be applied in some analysis of satellite data. 
Uh, next is the quality of the supervisor and of the integration of the team or institution. And this was very straightforward because Professor Brusone has a great experience in supervising PhD students. He had a lot of publication, a lot of citation. Then he is a principal investigator in a lot of projects. Uh, very influence of them are some. So uh, I, this is very easy to write. And uh, for the integration in the institution, usually the office support to research, it is the name here in the University of Trento, here already prepared section, so you just copy in your proposal. Uh, final part of excellence is potential of researcher to reach and reform its professional maturity and independence during the fellowship. Uh, I stated this very briefly with only one sentence that my future development in, uh, in obtaining new knowledge and wide my expertise application of industrial image processing and computer vision. So next, uh, next part is the impact. Here you will describe how uh, this research will influence on several levels. First on your professional level. Uh, here I wrote that I will get materials for publishing more articles that I will use obtain knowledge for some future research collaborate with the supervisor and the network I established with my Maria Kiri uh, uh, project. Also, this will have some advance in my career. Uh, second is the quality of the proposed measures to exploit and disseminate the project uh, results. Basically, here you provide impact on scientific community. So you write about number of publication. I wrote two in the uh, journal entry on the conference that I will visit some special uh, affairs to promote my research visit to European Science Open Forum. And the final part of impact is quality of proposed measures to communicate the project activities of different target audience. This is of your activities for a wider audience. So I wrote that I will organize workshops, website, uh, blog. I will present an European research night. Now they the name is changed to researchers at the schools with the new uh, Horizon Europe uh, uh, program framework. And the final part is implementation or the full name is quality and efficiency of the implementation. So here you should convince uh, evaluators that you will be able to accomplish plan activity in the next two years or less. You must prove that your plan is well organized, that activity is logically grouped in board packages. All work is divided into task and with the clear outcomes. And you must define your developers and uh, major milestones. I have uh, six deliverables and three milestones that is more than enough. And finally, this you put this in the uh, gun chart. Next thing is about risk. So you should elaborate in details on the risk. And this can be a very sensitive part. Uh, I state here only the that the risks are with uh, procurement of the, some equipment and that some weather conditions can influence on the drone flight. The last part of the implementation should show that the host institution can enough resources to support your research so that there is enough equipment. Uh, you have some small budget, but it is quite limited and you can buy some equipment, but not too much. Then I uh, submit everything and wait for about five months for results. And my project wasn't granted. The score was 79.3%. Uh, there is no official threshold for a proposal to be granted. After evaluation, rank list is made and your proposal will receive funds. If there is a money left when your position on the list is reached. But usually the threshold is some, somewhere between 80, uh, 85 and 90%. And they said that if you get more than 90, usually you will fund it. And right after I receive a negative answer, uh, office support to research uh, contact me and suggest me that I approve my project and my proposal and to resubmit. Also, Professor Bruzone agreed on resubmission. So I consider all the reasons why the project was re rejected and approved this during the summer of uh, 2020. And here is the weakness uh, stated in the evaluation summary report. For each part, there, is, uh, there was a room for improvement. If you look carefully, uh, basically there are sections which I didn't consider with enough attention. 
for example, transfer the knowledge to the whole institution is not adequately discussed in the proposal. So I take this uh, evaluation summary report and starting improving. Uh, for the transfer of knowledge, then I realized that it is not only your former expertise which you bring to the host institution, but also the new skills that you learn at the host institution in combination with, uh, you previously, with your previous experience can be something that you can transfer to the host institution, like, for example, using multispectral imaging, that is something new I learned, for food inspection, that's something I already done. Uh, so I present this uh, transfer, what I will transfer to host institution by the table for better visualization. I have now uh, five things and uh, basically that was some workshop tutorials and also part of the courses. Uh, for the networking, I explain now uh, in which ongoing project I can involve by the end of after Maria Kiri, uh, uh, Maria Kiri action. And uh, for the final weakness is excellence. I describe how acquired skills will help me to get a new project, but also I uh, said what will be the topic of this new project. Uh, next weaknesses in the impact part. If you the close, uh, what we close to this weaknesses, there are both dissemination and communication measures were, were not written well. So for the dissemination, again, I put it in the table, but now I will explain uh, in which journal I will publish and what conference and approximately when I. And also I did similar for the communication activities. Now, uh, who will listen to that uh, activities, when it will happen and what I expect, how many, uh, what feedback. So as a result of previous, jump chart have much more details now, and uh, it can be see what will be done and also when. As I previously mentioned, the uh, weakness was also the risk uh, because uh, there's something I didn't consider it uh, very carefully. Then I basically spent many days on this table of, with the weaknesses, with the ris risks. Uh, I read proposal again and again and ask myself what can go wrong. For example, classification error is too high with each of tested algorithms. Use cascade classific classification to boost uh, classification accuracy. And uh, then I uh, resubmit new version of the, of the uh, proposal in September 2020. Of course, I made some small correction in the text of the proposal, update a reference list and some si similar things. And this time, uh, as a result of this improvement, uh, the proposal was granted, scoring about 94.4%. Uh, uh, so I arrived in Trento uh, and start my research on uh, the 1st of September last year. And now I will say a few words about my research from initial activities, current findings, and what is planned for the future, uh, for the future work. Uh, first, uh, Taking a look at the commercial available multispectral camera, due to their high prices, it is possible to make a new, more affordable one using uh, triple band filters and uh, some color cameras. And uh, this idea I get uh, from uh, uh, to use multispectral uh, uh, to, to use multiband filters for Midopt. Midopt is one of the biggest supplier of. Uh, 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 filters and uh, also lens for the uh, machine vision applications. In the application note uh, on how to use dual band filter, 660, 850, they demonstrate how that filter and standard color camera can be used to obtain NDVI instead of using much more expensive multispectral camera. But uh, why not use more than one camera and more than one multiband filters. With appropriate selection of triple uh, band filters, maybe it is possible to obtain a multispectral image in eight or nine bands. So I uh, choose the following three uh, triple band filters, then some embedded vision cameras. Also, I, I add some uh, one thermal, uh, thermal camera with a solid temperature and uh, a special resolution, although it is dedicated for smartphones. Use a Raspberry Pi as a platform and put everything in one housing. And of course, there is some problem because uh, 
each of RGB pixel have a white uh, spect uh, white pass band. So I don't get response for only one band, but I get response for mixture of all bands uh, at that filter. And here are the all nine bands together from that three filter, different color represent different filters. And at the bottom is the problem. You now have a, this mixture of response at every pixel on each uh, camera. So uh, there is a solution. I found uh, two similar examples in literature. Basically, the, we assume that uh, the response is a mixture of all, linear mixture of all this contribution. And this equation explained the procedure. So this can, of course, be written in matrix form. And the calibration should give the coefficient of this, uh, this calibration matrix or how to solve this equation. So we perform calibration, uh, which setup is shown in here in image here. Uh, so here you have a uh, we have a spect uh, board spectral source. This is just ordinary halogen lamp. Then for the color reference, uh, we take. Uh, uh, we, uh, we, we take a standard color checker with 24 uh, color uniform pattern. Also, as a reference, we use a already uh, calibrated hyperspectral camera, and this is the device under the test that multispectral camera. Uh, so, uh, after acquisition, we uh, prior to further processing, uh, we must remove anything effects and also some fixed pattern noise, also some geometrical distortion. So this is uh, after uh, all doing that, we also registered these four images to the same uh, uh, field of view. And uh, there are three images for the three cameras together with uh, different uh, triple band filter on each. Also here is the reference panel with a number of each pattern. So it can be uh, uh, for further reference. Here is the image from the hyperspectral camera, just RGB one. And this is just for illustration, the image from the thermal camera. It is not using it as part of calibration. Thermal camera is calibrated uh, at uh, another, uh, another procedure using uh, some heater and uh, uh, some uh, uh, high quality uh, infrared camera. And here are some of the results. The, these nine images basically represent response of uh, nine bands. The color is chosen to best uh, suit the central wavelet of each of the filter. Uh, only for near infrared because it is out of uh, uh, range of uh, what we can see. Uh, it is uh, in grayscale. And here is uh, some results. So uh, the estimate response, this bl uh, blue one, is uh, uh, really close to the response for a hyperspectral image, uh, for a hyperspectral camera. So next thing is uh, uh, is assembling a more compact version of uh, this imaging device. We will use some uh, four cameras with uh, integrated one stream uh, with smaller filters, then also the smaller term uh, camera, but, but with uh, better performances. And then we add additional two sensors. They will be out of the housing, but also we needed this is for uh, uh, measuring the radiance of the sun because we at the end need the reflectance of the target and also some GPS receiver for reference of the images. And currently I'm writing a new code for, to control of this equipment. Also, there is a need for some calibration in the field. It is suggested that before uh, each uh, flight, the standard reflectance panel is uh, used uh, at the ground. So the calibration constant for each of the channel is determined before the flight in using this panel and the uh, sun radius sensor. And uh, during the flight, the reflectance at each pixel can be calculated also uh, to determine what is the influence of the height on the measurement, the calibration should be done at the several height up to 100 meters. And uh, the first following research topic is to get some hyperspectral reconstruction from this nine band. 
there are some successful estimation based on using 10 narrow bands measurement as an input of the neural network and getting output of 81 spectral points. These points are uh, very good uh, uh, with very low estimation error. And so using this, maybe we can get some hyperspectral images. And the uh, uh, second topic is uh, about possible detection of Laveseduri using multispectral images. Laveseduri is a grape uh, wine trunk disease, uh, which is spreading across European wine year despite significant effort to control it. And Laveseduri is the only uh, quarantine disease in the European and Mediterranean region. And therefore, uh, it is subject to mandatory uh, control and procedure. Uh, include the use of pesticide and also to uprooting of every infected plant. So possible early detection of Laveseduri can lower the number of uprooted grape, young grape vine plants uh, because we can uh, prevent the spreading of this disease. And also when 25 or uh, 20 or 25 percent, depending on the country, of grape vines in a parcel are contaminated, the whole uh, field must be uprooted. Sorry. Uh, so there are some possibilities that this disease can be detected using multispectral data. And we think that by using a spectral signature of the leaves, it can be detected before it is, it is obviously that fluorescedory attack the gray white trunk. So this can reduce spreading a lower percent of uprooting plants. Uh, we will test that, that hypothesis from this June in the area of Riva di Garda, and also we we'll tried some additional applications of uh, this device for grape vine monitoring and Fondazione Edmund Bach. And this uh, would be all from my side from now. Okay, thank you very much, Marco. So now we have uh, the time for questions or curiosities or. If you want to ask Marco advice on how to approach this kind of projects. Anybody? Maybe Marco, I can start with one, which is um, just technical question uh, on the budget side of the proposal. Okay, there is one, uh, we'll read it afterwards. Um, you have different possible items like most, I guess your salary as the fellowship owner, but then what are the other cost items that you can declare in this kind of projects? Well, I it, it the call for the 2020, the budget for research, is uh, uh, 19,200 euros. So you can spend it for buying some equipment or publishing something or for some uh, additional uh, expensive for get, going to some conference and some similar things. So basically it's expected that uh, equipment is at the place where you are going. I see. Uh, there okay. is a question from Costro. Uh, he or she, sorry, I don't know, is asking about, is it likely for one person to get a grant right after getting PhD? Yes, uh, this is uh, basically most likely because uh, most of applicants applied after getting PhD. So just uh, when, when finish their PhD, they are trying to uh, improve, to have a very good uh, career as a researcher, so Maria Kiri is a great possibility to do that. So yes, there is a great opportunity after getting PhD. Maybe it is the best thing basically to apply for Maria Kiri application project. Anybody else? Just open your mic and spell out your questions if you have, or you can write it in the chat and I can read it. Everybody's shy. Well, consider that these seminars are taught to give you um, 
a view on possible opportunities for your future career and what could it mean to have a career in science, including writing project proposals. So uh, it's not that somebody is judging you on the base of your questions. So feel free to ask whatever doubt you have. Maybe Marco, meanwhile, they think about, uh, I'm curious to know what was your feeling after getting a rejection and what was the um, motivation that uh, made you decide to go ahead with another trial, psychologically? And well, uh, after I get results, I, okay, I was a little bit disappointed, but, uh, when I read a summary report, I understand that what is the that what I miss, and uh, when I get a suggestion to start again, I write the mail to Professor Brusson, and he said that because he think uh, that I should uh, resubmission because the excellent part get the best mark, so I said okay, then uh, why not then try again. So the evaluation, even if uh, a little bit uh, critic, was a way to improve it and grow despite yes. it got accepted. Yes, it helped me a lot to make a better project, of course. And usually a lot of people didn't get uh, Maria Kiri at the first. So I remember that there was a... Uh, uh, first training in 2019 uh, uh, organized by the University of Trento. One of the success story was uh, one uh, girl from, uh, I think, Spain. He get it in the third uh, oh. try. Awesome. Uh, there is another question in the chat. Uh, how long was the final proposal that you sent and how long it takes you to write it? Sorry. What me? How long? I didn't. Um... I think the number of pages, but ah, the, fixed. Uh, yes, it is fixed. It had ten pages. It uh, it cannot be more than ten pages. Uh, when you start thinking, you think you think that is uh, too much, but uh, very soon you figure out that it is basically very low. So you must be very concise and uh, and do uh, tell something in, in a very short way. Um, the other part is how long it took you to write it. Mm, well, I first proposal I write basically from the middle of uh, July to the beginning of almost a month. I doing almost that thing when I have a time course. You mean full time writing? Oh, uh, I was doing other things, but uh, I think you need a, at least a month to write something like this. With the full writing, of course. Anyone else? You're welcome. Now, do you feel more comfortable in writing other proposal, like, for example, ERC? Oh, yes, I can say that. So last call for uh, questions, comments, or curiosities. Maybe, Mark, you want to add something to close no. the seminar? Yes, thank you a lot for inviting me also for this presentation. And thank you, every, everyone, for attention. Also, if anyone figure out some other question, they can send me a mail or contact me by LinkedIn page. There is one more popping up. Please go ahead. Also by voice. No, oh, the, the writing, writing the question. Okay, okay. That gives the time. Meanwhile, how was it to 
change your institution? So at the beginning, it was a little bit hard, but at the end, I uh, I managed somehow. So because at the same time I was uh, in the management, so there was a lot of things must be finished before I go. So it was a little bit hard. Okay. Uh, maybe you can read the question. How this research period helped you to grow? What did you learn in this period, uh, personally and technically? Uh, okay. Uh, well, I uh, I basically enter a new field. This is remote sensing, so I started learning a uh, a lot of things about multispectral and hyperspectral imaging. Also, how to do something with hyperspectral camera, how to uh, process these images and uh, also working in, in another institution is something you experience. So it was basically a very great experience. It is because the stealing I'm at the first part of this, uh, this uh, project. Uh, maybe I have one more curiosity that might be useful to the students here. Um, you said you changed your topic of research, moving from some image, let's say generic image processing to something more specific in remote sensing. Is this a request in the Marie Curie um, call about proposing something slightly different from your earlier experience or was it your own choice? No, no, this was my own choice. This was my own choice. I had interest now in it. I get interested in, in, in remote sensing and also it is a little bit connected with image. It is connected with image processing. So I, I have some basic ex, uh, experience of how it's in functioning. And, uh, but it is not uh, mandatory. I think maybe even uh, when you finish your PhD, we are entering in some new, some new field. So basically you can, uh, uh, continue your research after PhD by using Maria Curie. Maybe that is the best idea and the uh, best place to start writing the proposal. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so if there is no other, yes. Do you have suggestions to junior researcher who already graduated with a PhD? I don't know what this uh, question about, but if he asked me, uh, did I suggest to try and uh, uh, try with Maria Kiri, I will say yes, of course. Okay. Okay, then I think we can uh, close here the seminar. Um, there are others in the schedule, other PIs. PI seminars. I'm not aware about the schedule, but I imagine all PhD students got informed. So um, I welcome you to join the next one, whenever it will be. So enjoy your afternoon and thank you again for joining. Uh, bye. Hello. Bye. Thank you. Bye.